when we treat a person, he is a Jivatma. And if he is a Jivatma, he is an element, he is the element of God. So alright, if you if you are thinking in terms of a machine, you count the strength of a machine in horsepower. But how can I count the strength of an individual as human resource or a manpower? We cannot do it like that. Because for us, every Jivatma is an important, he is an element of God, he is a account of Paramatma. And every individual for us is a special person. Because you cannot compare anyone with anybody. Uh, we have ten fingers and we know the phenomena of fingerprints. So as I don't know, I am not a medical professional, but I have been told that even among two lakh persons, only two persons fingerprints can match. They are not necessarily matching, but they can match among two lakh persons. So you are a special individual. I can only be compared with myself, none other than me. Because I have been created by the God as a very special person. So how can it be quantified as a human resource? For us, each individual is a special individual person, individual creative entity created by the eternity. So that is why we again submitted that education ministry has its own connotation. You go to Europe, from where we have almost borrowed our entire education system. In no country there is any human resource development ministry. And in all the countries, other than defense and finance, the third most important ministry is the education ministry. Unfortunately, we have downsized the importance of our own ministry and our own strength and made it human resource development. If you go back to history when India got independent, there was a ministry known as education and culture. So other thing which we destroyed was we have removed culture from education and linked it with tourism. Unfortunately, because I am working in the ministry of culture, I can realize now the only meaning of culture is to perform a dance or a drama or do a painting and that's all. That is the culture. But for us, culture is an entirely different thing. It is the way of the life. I, I am standing in front of you. I am a physical entity, but I am also a cultural entity. And which we forgot. Because, because in Bharatiya Parampara, in Bharatiya Shastra, Samskriti has an entirely different connotation. Like Samskara, so now today our entire education has remained without samskara. There are no samskara. And very interestingly, I am not a professor of English, but a professor of English would definitely correct me if they want. There is no parallel word to samskara in the entire English vocabulary. So samskara itself is an Indianized term, is a Bharatiya term. So that comes through culture, that comes through samskriti. So any education which is without samskriti and samskrata is useless. So how can you, I can you alienate shiksha, education from samskriti and samskrata, which they have committed a blunder. I am happy that the national education policy has proposed to rename the ministry as education ministry, which was also decided in a Conference of Vice Chancellors, where we invited more than 400 Vice Chancellors in Delhi on 29th of September, where Honorable Prime Minister addressed the gathering and the entire program was called uh, as the Conference of Academic Leadership on Education for Researchers. And we are happy that more than 400 Vice Chancellors, directors of IITs, IIMs, and Indian Institute of Sciences all came and then they discussed the whole thing. So this is one thing which we have tried to do. Another thing which we have tried to do in the education policy form, which was also accepted. A student of science would not go to the stream of arts. He would not even look at the stream of arts. After the class 9, he or she is compartmentalized. If you want to learn commerce, you go to 
commerce. You do not to learn science. You learn science. You want to learn arts. You learn arts. But if I am a student of mathematics and if I want to learn vocal music, my education system does not allow me to do that. And that creates frustration because I am only becoming a unidirectional human entity rather than having a multi-dimensional human entity. Like Subramanya ji has told you, this is a 360 degree education system which is always India, advocated and propagated. But we were compartmentalized to the extent that even the school education did not have any relation with the college education. I am happy that two stalwarts, one belonging to school education and one belonging to collegiate education are sitting on the same time, but it has never happened in our entire education system. Often when I go to various recreation courses and uh, uh, orientation courses of the teacher and I ask, alright you are a teacher of say geography or botany or philosophy, how many of you have really gone to school and tried to understand what all has been taught in the school? Unfortunately, nobody goes to the school because a person who is in a college education and the father he feels that he or she is much superior and he is not qualified to go to the school to listen, to understand what is all happening in the schools. And the schools have also made a very right department. Whatever they want to teach, they would teach, they would never concern that what is going to happen once my, my word is going out of my school and going to the college, higher education. So again there was an air right compartment of higher education. This new education policy has decompartmentalized the higher education. And now there is a free flow of information in education. Anybody who is pursuing a course in science and technology is also eligible to take up a course in fine arts or in other fields, whichever he or she wants to do. And that is the free flow of education. We always remember the famous poem of Gurudev Ravindranath Tagore, Gitanjali, where the world comes as narrow domestic walls. And those narrow domestic walls we created among our own entire education system. We created the walls. Now we have to break the walls. And once you break the wall, you create a student who is happy with his or her education which he has achieved from the institution. I have seen many students who have graduated from Indian Institute of Technology and later joining a class of painting because they always wanted to pursue painting. But the parents pressure and the social pressure never allowed them to pursue their own hobbies. There was an interesting book uh, written by Robin Sharma titled the monk who sold his Ferrari. That's a very interesting book. And I think all those who have crossed 40 should read that book. That gives you an idea how our education system is imposing its social pressure on our child so that he is not able to pursue whatever he or she wanted to pursue in his, uh, in his education system. So fortunately this time, this national education policy is giving us an opportunity especially to the children who want to pursue the course of their own choice, pursue the stream of their own choice and they are not locked in one particular stream. That is the biggest advantage. And if we go back to which, which Bharti Shikshan Mandal has always been doing, we have been advocating the Gurukula system. And Gurukula system was always that. Gurukula system and a teacher-centric system where teacher was supposed to decide in which stream the child is supposed to go and what kind of education I am going to provide to the child. Not the society, not the parents, but the teacher was having the prerogative of deciding. And it was a student-centric, learner-centric system. So child had all the opportunities to blossom in the area where they had the capability and they had the interest. Unfortunately, we have uh, condemned our Gurukula system saying that this is cold, this is orthodox and what not. But that was the most scientific system of the earlier period. I know that in today's circumstances with the, with the growing population and the availability of infrastructure, we cannot directly go back to Gurukula system, but we can always take the best things out of the Gurukula system and put them
them in use in our existing education system. A lot of things are going to change uh, based on that. So that has also been done in this education policy, which is a very interesting feature. The third important feature of this education policy is that stress on your matru bhasha, stress on your own language, that has that has been wrongly quoted as the battle of language, which has been created superficially after the independence. That is unfortunate. But unless we have the education in our own matru bhasha, in our own native language, how are we going to grow as a citizen? who belongs to this soil. What happened is that after the advent of uh, industrial revolution in Europe, uh, where Europe has taught assembly line functioning, and that assembly line functioning also populated the education system. So that is why the regimentation, the uniform, the class, the curriculum, the syllabus, everything was borrowed from the European policy. And along with that, we also borrowed language. That is the important Today, what is happening is that English is becoming the core uh, of, uh, of communication. That has become the communicative language. I am also speaking to you in English because nobody ever took me pains to teach me either Malayalam or Tamil or Kannada when I was in school. I was told that you should learn English because you want to become global. What is the use of becoming global? If I cannot become Indian, there is no use of becoming global. First I should become Indian and then I should strive for becoming global. But that language debate has always carried on because of various political reasons in this country and that's not unfortunate. We should learn our own Indian languages. We have so rich heritage in our languages. Almost in all Indian languages Literature has been created by our stalwarts, our sant, rishis, rinis, our literatures, scholars, they have created so much of things. But never ever there was an effort to teach uh, Indian languages to our students. So much so that unfortunately now a foreign language is being poised against Sanskrit. Because the students want to score higher in their higher secondary examination. Teacher asked him to take French rather than any other Indian language because French is school. My French is schooling. French is not my language. If I am teaching you French, I will learn French and then teach you. It has not come automatically to me. I have also borrowed. So I am transferring the borrowed knowledge. So if I have only 50 rupees to give you, I can only give you 50 rupees. I cannot give you 500 rupees. Very plain and simple. So a less educated person would always give more marks to prove his ability. So that is why French is scoring. So why can't Malayalam and why can't Tamil and why can't Kannada and why can't Telugu be scoring like French? Because nobody has ever taken any pains to teach proper Malayalam Telugu. That, that was the case. Now this education policy is stressing on the at least the basic education in your own mother tongue, which is very important. They have also fragmentalized the uh, education pattern to 5 plus 3 plus 3 plus 4, which is very welcome because they have also included the education from class 3rd. And which is very important because then you get the kind of uh, perspective in the entire education which deals with the holistic education system rather than just focusing after the primary education and moving upwards they have also included it from the class third. So those are very important features and the last but not the least there are several points but I do not want to take much of time on that but last but not the least is that this entire education policy has tried to reaffirm the respect in the teachers, which is the most important thing, because the society has graduated, gradually lost respect in the teachers, so we are not getting good, competent and dedicated teachers for the society. If you don't have a good teacher in the society, you cannot aspire to become a very good society. If you ask an engineer or a doctor or, or a bureaucrat or a judge, 
What is the contribution in your life of your teacher? They will always remember that so and so teacher has taught me, that is why I have become a bureau, and that is why I have become a judge, and that is why I have become an officer. But then, if you ask, do you want to become a teacher? They will flatly say, no. As so, I was invited uh, as a chief guest in a, in a huge uh, seminar where 500 teachers were there and we were felicitating, say, 20 30 teachers from the teacher's day. And when I was asked to speak, I just raised the question. All right, we have felicitated so many teachers and 400 and 500 of you are here. How many of you would like to make your child to be a teacher? And only three or four heads were raised in the audience of mine. And that is the case. Even you, you see you have small kids in your house, especially girls, and the favorite game is to teacher teacher. What are you playing? I am playing teacher teacher. And the first one who snub the child is her mother. Don't you want to become doctor? Don't you want to become scientist? Why you want to become teacher? Don't say that. But you see, teacher is the first and foremost person whose impression is important, whose impression continues for the whole life. So what are we going to make good teachers for the society? If we want to make this country really great, really big, we should focus on teachers. And then that is what this national education policy is doing. They are trying to restore the respectability of the teacher. And that is, that is why they have created some kind of a training programs for teachers, incentives for the teachers and uh, an integrated program. So after 12, somebody who wants to become a teacher can always aspire for this kind of a career and become a teacher in their life. And uh, we, have, we have the connotation of Swadeshi Pujjate Raja Vidwan Sarvatra Pujjate. Vidwan has been, has been restricted and uh, even, even when the Raja Vishika used to take place in our ancient time, the, ra the Raja the king used to say, no, no, I am only the server of this country by the name of the God. The parent of this land is the teacher, Acharya. Pula, Guru Pula is the teacher. That used to be the tradition in our entire Indian system. But we have left it far behind. Now we have progressed into a, a, an age of rapid uh, professionalism and uh, and I all often say this is now we are heading towards a package driven society. If you ask a child what course he or she is doing, and they say, uh, My pertinent question is, What are you going to get after this? What would be your package? I will not ask what is your attribute, what knowledge you are going to gain after this qualification. Even I am asking them the wrong question. I am asking what package you would get. So suppose somebody is doing some job of his or her own liking where the package is very low, automatically the child gets frustrated. Alright, I am doing something which does not hurt me, good package. What are your prospects of going to a foreign country? What you will get when you get a foreign appointment? What is the, this national education policy is trying to address? And why this is important is that in another 10 years, as we all know, India is going to become the biggest youth power in the entire world. 50 to 60 percent of the entire world's youth population will belong to India. Even today, China looks at India with more envy. Let us say envy is the right word. I will not use any other word. But China is looking at India with more envy because if you go to China, their youth often say, sir, after 10 years, we are going to face a severe problem because we would not have enough young people to cater the need of the country. Only Bharat would have 55 to 60 percent of bright and energetic youth who would not only cater Bharat but who would cater the entire globe. So this education policy is going to become, it is going to play a very vital role in making of not only India but the entire globe. And why entire group? Because we have always been saying, I am This is mine, this is your. These are the thoughts of people who have very narrow mind. Udar Charita Ram tu Vasudaiva Kudunda. Udar Charita Ram. We have a large heart where we think the entire group is my family. And that is why we are 
we are looking towards this family and we are trying to do betterment of this family. So those are the things which are being compounded in this national education policy. There are, there are ways to criticize, everything can be criticized and we all know that nothing is perfect. Anybody who feels that he or she is a perfect is not only fool, fooling himself or herself but also fooling the entire world because nobody is perfect, no document is perfect. There are always scopes and chances of improvement. But as one uh, very famous philosopher has said, best is the enemy of good. If you always strive for best and do not do anything good, you will never do anything. So this is a very positive step towards doing something good to our education system. And it is, it is a document which is well researched. Almost three and a half years they took to prepare this document. There has been discussions and deliberations at all levels. At every stakeholder's level, there was a discussion. They, they met the students, they met the teachers, they also met the parents. They also met the institutional heads, owners of the private colleges, owners of the government institutions, and then they made this document. Almost 500 pages document. It's not a small document. If you want to read it, I think it would take a few days, if not months, to go through the entire document. And if you want to digest, it would take at least six to eight months to digest that. So almost 500 pages if someone has written for your education policy, you should give it a thought and a serious thought. So think about that. That's very important. And the most important thing of this entire document is that they have tried to provide you the economy for which we have always been asking for. Like the National Education Commission, Rajpuri Shikshalo, which is an independent body, headed by the Prime Minister, none other than the Prime Minister of India would head that body and that would have more than 50% uh, of the representation from the academy. There would not be bureaucrats. We have also been always uh, craving about the over bureaucratization of the entire education system. So here is, is a possibility that with the Rashtriya Shiksha you we would have less bureaucrats in deciding the fate of the education. That is one thing. And number two is they are also trying to give metonymy to various colleges to provide degrees, uh, which has not been done. Re recently, everything was everything was uh, wasted in the university system, and universities were providing the degrees. And then we also realized that university, rather than becoming the center for knowledge, they only became center for the degrees. So now they have decentralized and they are proposing the autonomy to the colleges where they can also provide their degrees, where they can also provide their own curriculum courses to the students, which is a very welcoming feature. And also they have focused into the education, uh, university education system where they are trying to make three different types of universities. One is research university, other one would be research and teaching university and third would be only teaching universities. So this categorization is only to highlight the importance of research which has been grossly neglected. That is also, that is why our AO also created the National Research Foundation which that foundation for the work for the uh, research purposes in the country. A lot of good things are there in the national education policy and uh, the academia, people who are concerned with education should give it a thought, should give a serious thought. Uh, recently I heard the Honorable Majority Minister say that when it was uploaded to the website for inviting suggestions, already more than 2 lakh suggestions have uh, come to him. Now it is, it is another Herculean task to go through those suggestions and uh, find out what is the substance in those suggestions. But nonetheless, we are all hopeful to have some concrete uh, uh, steps in uplifting the entire moral of the education system of the country. Bharatiya Shikshan Mandal, as uh, Supramanyaki might have told you about, uh, that we all are working for the Bharatiya in the entire education system. And that we say Bharatiya, it is not only a 
love which is written in the words, but we have to follow it in the spirit. And what is Bharatiya love? If you go, if you look at, look at yourself, if you peep into your own heart, you will get the answer. What is Bharatiya love? So, so we have to find. Are we really doing justice to our educational system and we are correlating ourselves with that essence of Bharatiya? So that Bharatiya. So we have, we are also, we are also working on various, uh, various projects, various uh, disciplines, various uh, divisions of Bharatiya education under through which we want to achieve Bharatiya. It may be our UI, it may be our uh, section report, it may be our uh, Anusandhan uh, proposed in the way of Prakashan Shaka. So many diversified fields, and we are working on that for the last uh, 50 years. This is very fortunate that Bharati Institution Mattai would be completing its 50 years of the Ramnami of 2000, 2020. And we all are invited to that function. The function would be held in Nampur on 2nd, 3rd, and 4th of April. And Parantujani Sarsana Chalakji would be there for the whole function. He has 93 to be there. And we would be inviting uh, more than 150 vice chancellors from across the country and eminent academicians working in the school education, working in the higher education, working in the social sector. They would all come there to celebrate 50 years of Bharati Shikshan Mandala. And uh, since we are a Karekarta based organization, rather than festivity, our goal is to build the organization. So we have, uh, we have uh, made some pratas and for this uh, entire event, and that is why we have named this, named this event as Pratas and Samaru. So that Pratas and Samaru is going to be held uh, in the month of April. We all are invited to come there and uh, have discussions and I am hopeful that uh, next time when, uh, when I come here on a Sangatana tour, I will have many of you blossoming as Karikartas of Bharati Shikshat Mandat and in the state of Kerala, which is the, which is the God's own country, so I know that the entire education philosophy Flows from Kerala, that is from south to north, this philosophy comes. We have rich Shastri traditions available in Kerala. Those traditions should also flow towards north, and they should also become the lighting factors for others who do not know much about the Bharati Parampara. So, a lot of expectations are there from the state of Kerala, and I know that uh, with people like you around, Bharati Shikshan Chandra is definitely going to have a very bright future. I thank you once again for giving me this opportunity to come here.